Hey everyone, Jason Sherman here with Strap On Your Boots. In today's episode, I have CEO and co-founder of GreenPal, Brian Clayton. Thanks for coming to the show, man. Jason, thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. Awesome. Yeah, dude. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to use your customer feedback in order to drive SEO strategy or search engine optimization strategy. C quite a mouthful. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of, uh, for people who are listening or watching, like exactly what SEO is in the first place uh, in a simple description. Yeah, SEO is using organic traffic as a means to drive your business. And so uh, SEO in like one sentence would be making your property, your website congruent with what Google wants to see in terms of surfacing your content, surfacing your website for queries that might help people solve a problem. And so for us, you know, lawn mowing service nearby me, lawn mowing service Lincoln, Nebraska, lawn mowing service Indianapolis uh, is like queries that we target and, and, and what we write content for and, uh, and how we solve somebody's problem when they're looking for a lawn mowing service. Yeah. Now you mentioned content. So one of the things I always teach people in my course or my book or whatnot is blogging, writing content is super important because websites are crawled or the robots are, are crawling the internet to search for dynamic, ever changing content versus like a static web page that hasn't changed in 10 years. So is that kind of part of the the strategy here is to consistently update your blog and add new information to help people for certain topics to drive them to your services? Yes, uh, Google loves freshness. Google loves new new information, and that's going to it's going to prioritize freshness. So that's part of it too. It's it's part of uh, of of solving somebody's problem, being the best uh, answer to their question. And if it's and if freshness and, and uniqueness is part of that, then yes, you have to play that game. It's particularly in like news sites and things of that sort, but not necessarily like if you have flat out the best uh, recipe for chicken Parmesan, that doesn't change, you know? And, and if you have built the best guide for how to make the best chicken Parmesan in your own kitchen, and, you know, that's, that's not, Google's not necessarily going to prioritize freshness around that kind of query. But in most cases, the answer is yes. Yeah, I guess you'd have to post some like new uh, videos, creating, you know, your putting your ingredients together, maybe selling a book uh, with recipes in it. You'd have to keep kind of yeah, that's a tough one. Good, good job on that one. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it can be a hamster wheel at times, but that's just part of the game. Yeah, because you got to keep spitting out new content. So speaking of which we met, you know, in the beginning, I mentioned how to use customer feedback. So how do you actually use customer feedback to drive the, the SEO strategy? Like th th there are two different things. One is getting information from people, questions, suggestions, feedback on maybe the UI user interface or UX user experience of your app, your platform, your website, or your physical product. And then how do you use that information to then, you know, is it because you're putting in those questions in the SEO or like, what, what is it here? What's the, what's the tactics? Back in the day, SEO was more or less around matching keywords on a page with keywords in somebody's query. So for us, like lawn mowing service, uh, uh, Sacramento, California, if we had those phrases on the page uh, repeated throughout the, the content and the copy, that was important and Google would match that against that, that, that key phrase. Today, it's less about keywords on a page and more about solving a person's problem. Uh, fulfilling the query uh, is the way they put it. And so you can use customer feedback to better solve people's problems. And so for us, uh, you know, we, we, we rely on customer feedback to figure out how to make the product better, but also how to drive our SEO strategy. And so for us, we've, we've learned over the years that people aren't necessarily looking for the cheapest lawn mowing service. They're looking for reliability. They're looking for speed. They're looking for somebody that'll show up on time. So that drives the copy on the landing page. And instead of the cheapest lawn mowing service in Sacramento, we, we use copy like hire a, a lawn mowing service in Sacramento that'll actually show up. And so solving that problem and matching the, the thought sequence of the customer and the query on the page causes them to come onto the page, stay there and, and go through the funnel rather than pogo sticking back to the search engine results page. Sounds so, like reverse psychology, basically. You're, you're basically telling people what they're going to be asking on your site so that when they search for it, you pop up and it could be for any business. I mean, it could be a, a new app and maybe the app is for dog walking, you know, and you're, and you're saying like, 
how, what do I do if I leave my dog home alone all the time? Or how can I get someone to walk my dog when I'm at work and things like that? And like people are going to type these things in and then your app will pop up. That's a good, that's a good idea. That's right. So, and using that feedback to understand what's in their head right. to match their thought sequence is how customer feedback informs SEO strategy rather than saying, Oh, I want to rank for dog walking, uh, cheap dog walking service, uh, you know, dog walking service uh, in, in Los Angeles, rather than trying to target these keywords, using what customers are telling you and solving that problem, it will help you have better success in SEO today. Yeah, like, like, how can I get my dog to be nicer to strangers? Things like that. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. you, have, you have a dog walker showing up at your house and, you know, so there, yeah, I get it. That's pretty cool. So for people listening, Try to tap into the psychology of people, maybe go onto Google and type in some searches yourself for the topics that you need or you think people might want to be searching for and then use them in your copy. Kind of makes sense. That's right. And, and, and talking with your customers and closing the gap between founder logic and customer logic and using those insights in your SEO strategy is how you compete in 2022. Now, Speaking of 2022, I mean, things have changed dramatically during the pandemic and now with, you know, WW3 and a lot of other craziness happening, right? So how how can we tackle Google search or social media search or any kind of search to drive customers? I mean, a lot of people can't even get their first 10 customers, let alone 10,000. So how do we how do we drive customers to our offerings, our service, our website uh, using all these different capabilities? Yeah, for us, it's focus, focus, focus on one thing, distilling things down into the, the smallest kind of atomic unit, if you will. And so we have thrown everything we have into organic search. It's the one channel that we rely on. Uh, we get over half of our customers through it. And, and not just focusing on just search, but also on the long tail and in, in places that, you know, in the early days we could compete. Um, you know, you may not be able to cert, uh, rank for lawn mowing services on a national level, but maybe you could rank for lawn mowing services uh, Alpharetta, Georgia, which is a suburb of, of Atlanta. And maybe it might take you a couple of years to build up the authority to rank for the key phrase for a major metro like Atlanta, but you could pick off the, the suburbs around yeah, outliers. Atlanta. Yeah. So my so, advice so, is so, so target the outliers. Basically, don't target the big guns because you're going to be battling against all the other companies right. out there that are trying to also and they and they have big dollars, right? These people have millions and billions of dollars, so they're piling in on like New York and like you know, like That's you right. said, Atlanta and Los Angeles. So you target like the, the, the outliers. That makes more sense. And a lot of times, the these big guns have been around for a decade or two, right. or maybe since the dawn of the internet, and they've built up a lot more authority in the right. eyes of Google. And it's hard to compete against that for the for the big for the head terms. But like your long tail, you can you can flat out make better copy, make better content for those key phrases and out compete them that way and then build up from there. And that's a good point that people should remember is when you're battling against these big guns, right? They they've been in the news like a hundred times. They have videos going back to the beginning of YouTube. They have social media accounts that have been managed by teams of people for so many years and they must have like the, the the their blogs right and all their content must be so high up on the SEO list that you're kind of on page five of the That's search. Right. So like, you really got to battle your way up there. Yeah, you're not going to beat, you know, using the dog walking example, you're not going to beat them for uh, dog walking service Los Angeles. But what you could beat them for is where is the best place to walk my dog in Venice Beach, California. And you could create like a thousand word guide and pictures and things of that sort. And that's flat out the best piece of content for that query. And you do that over and over and over again, hundreds and maybe even thousands of times, you build a foundation that way. And over time, you compete with the big guys. You're a baker in New York, huge competitors in there. And you might type in instead, you know, where to find the best vegan cupcakes in Brooklyn. Exactly. You know what and, I'm saying? So that and, and maybe not even Brooklyn, maybe Dumbo. Uh, yeah, or, and, or and Queens on, or something. Yeah, yeah, on the corner of X, Y, and Z, and and so just going as long tail as yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah. And while you may not get a thousand people a month that way, you might get twenty a month for that for that key phrase, and you do that over and over again. And guess what? Those unique pieces of content acquire links, and that helps you in the long in the long term as well. And so an SEO strategy is a, is a long game, and it's very much a bottom up game. 
And speaking of our little Easter egg that we've been throwing around this episode about dog walking, supposedly you got bit by a dog while passing out flyers for Green Pal. I got to hear I, this one. Too. I did. I did. When we first started Green Pal a decade ago, Green Pal is a 10 year overnight success. But when we first started, we had no SEO strategy. We had no uh, digital marketing strategy. And we were kind of very much in level one of the video game. And we just had to get a hundred people to try this damn thing we had built. And the only thing I knew to do was to pass out flyers. So my two co-founders and I passed out something like 200,000 door hangers all over Nashville, Tennessee, where we live. That's the way to do it, man. And it got us our first hundred customers. And, but I got bit by a dog two times. And so oh we, God. we came like a, like a big dog, a small dog on uh, your leg, your arm. Uh, like what happened? One was a cute little pound puppy that I thought was harmless. And, 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 and he bit me. And then another one was, look, was a, was a dog that looked like that was going to bite you. And so I saw that one coming. Uh, Jeez, man. the second one, the second one, uh, definitely hurt more. Did you, and, need, did you need stitches? No, let's thank God. And we, we kept on hoofing it that day. And, and, <laughs> And still hit our Ho- hope I don't got day. rabies. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And, and uh, but what I learned, like twelve customers per dog bite, was not a scalable user acquisition strategy. Right, right, right. But that got us the first hundred customers we needed. And talking with those people is how in, that informed us on our strategy of okay, where do we go next? How do we get from level one to level two? And how do we develop an, an SEO strategy? And so that's what we had to do at that stage of the game. So it sounds like you really bootstrapped it. I mean, I've been on the streets for my app as well in, in the past, hitting colleges to get users, get feedback, and then iterate, change it up, go back, do surveys, show mock-ups, all that thing. So it sounds like you, you've done similar strategies where you're really taking that feedback to kind of drive your decision-making using data, right, to drive your decision-making as well. Is that is that how you you know, scale your business? Is that how you started out? Definitely. It has been how we haven't gone out of business and how we got through the first four or five years, which are the hardest. You know, uh, some of my favorite books in the early days we were reading were Lean Startup by Eric Reese. And then, and then his, and his mentor was uh, Steve Blank. He wrote a book called the Startup Owner's Manual. What these guys, have, these guys have written like four or five books, thousands of pages of text and basically beats into your head one thing, get out of the building and go talk to your customers. And we did that. And thank God we did because that was free R&D. And that helped us understand what problem we were solving. Like, like I mentioned earlier, we thought we were trying to, to, to deliver the cheapest way to get your grass cut. And while the pricing is competitive, it's often not the cheapest way. And that's not what our customers wanted. They wanted reliability, reliability. They wanted speed. They wanted somebody to show up when they were supposed to. It wasn't until we had those literal like conversations in coffee shops with our customers and at their kitchen table did we did we key in on this. And that helped us kind of make the right bets in the early days. What's funny is, and, and the irony here is that like 90% of entrepreneurs are just too lazy to do this stuff, right? Because it is a lot of work. It is a slog and it is a lot of, you know, getting out of the office, getting out of the house and driving around, talking to people, getting feedback and then iterating where most entrepreneurs and maybe Brian, you can back me up on this one. They think they know everything. Yeah, They, they, they think their tough. ideas are the best. They think that everything that they know is that's it. I don't need books. I don't need to do this slog. I can, my idea, you know, so what do you have to say for entrepreneurs out there who think they know everything and they just refuse to follow the steps? Listen to your customers or you'll have none is, is what I have learned the hard way. And there's this natural phenomenon that occurs between the founder and the customer. And there's this gap and there's founder logic and there's customer logic. And you're both looking at the problem from different paradigms. And the way you close that is to speak with your customers, make it really easy for them to talk to you, remove all the friction. In the early days, your cell number needs to be on the email. Your cell number needs to be on the homepage. You need to answer the phone. You need to do the live chat because you need that R&D. You need that feedback to get through those first few levels of the game. And the reality is most founders just want to sit behind the laptop and code or write blog posts or theorize or, yeah. or, or read a blog post or watch something on YouTube. And the reality is, is the answer, like you're sitting in the answer. It's, it's, it's your customers. It's what they're telling you. It's, it's what they're doing and not doing. That's going to give you the insight on, on how you need to make your bets the right way in the early days. And the oldest saying is the customer is always right. And that works in this industry too. When you have a startup or an idea, listen to your customers because what they're telling you is what they want. doesn't matter really what you want. Those are just That's your right. ideas. That's so before, before we head out of here, I want to know um, three quick tips for growth hacking for my 
people listening or watching, um, what do you suggest if someone has a new idea, new startup, new ma new app, new website? What are the three quick tips for like growth hacking and scaling? We used to have these uh, these like little weekend uh, hackathons. They they were real popular about ten years ago, and I don't know if they're still doing them, but. But I think you can learn more about an idea uh, in one of those little hackathons than you can in like two years of, of, of a traditional business journey. And the point is, it's like getting something in the hands of customers and, and closing the distance between where you're at today and customers actually using something that you've built or a service that you're offering. You will learn so much more doing that than you will a year of business planning or uh, going to some sort of uh, boot camp for software development or something like that, you will, you will learn more about getting something in the hands of, uh, of customers than you will any other way. And so that's my, that's my main tip is to close the distance between you and somebody actually doing business with you, getting 10 credit cards on file, uh, and just getting 10 customers, 10 sales, and then reevaluating from there if the idea is good or not. I think that's good enough because we're, we're running out of time now. And I'd like to know where people can maybe find out more about your, your platform and, and website or any kind yeah. of offering, any, any services or offerings you have. Yeah. Uh, life's too short to cut your own grass. So just download <laughs> green pal in the app store or play store. Uh, and anybody wants to hit me up, you can reach me on Instagram, Brian M Clayton. Perfect. Love it, Brian. Thanks for coming, man. This was awesome. I appreciate it. And I hope everyone enjoyed the episode and we'll see you in next week's episode. <laughs>